Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to divide two polynomials using long division. Now, it'd be very helpful, I'm not gonna go in this video, you know, the process of using long division like with numbers, but it'd be very helpful to kind of go back um, to a video of um, example of how to do long division with numbers because basically how to do long division with polynomials is basically the exact same process. But I will work through these videos, you know, slowly and explain things. So hopefully by the end of the video, you'll be able to do a problem on your own. So the, basically what we have here is we have a polynomial being divided by another polynomial. So when we're using long division, um, basically we're going to want to use this uh, using the long division algorithm. So we're going to want to set it up like a long division problem. So therefore I'll have x plus 5 divides into x squared plus 8x plus 15. Um, it's also important to kind of understand you know, the process because I'm going to be using a lot of vocabulary. What you're dividing into is going to be your divide, or what you're dividing by is your divisor, and this is going to be your dividend. The answer we're going to write up top, which will be our quotient. So basically, what we want to do is determine how many times does x plus 5 divide into x squared plus 8x plus 15. So the way that, the, the way that we're going to do that is when we're dividing, we're always going to, we want to make sure, first of all, which this problem, actually all these problems are in that format, you want to make sure that, first of all, they're all in descending order, right? And if you remember in polynomials, descending order means you have the largest degree first, and then you go down in descending power order. So you want to make sure your divisor as well as your dividend are in descending order, or in st uh, your standard form, which both of these are, so that's good. Now, we're always going to be dividing by our leading term of our divisor, which is going to be x, all right? Um, so now we're just going to go one term at a time. So I'm going to say x divides into x squared, just like you start with the first number. So how many times does x divide into x squared? Well, x divides into x squared x times. And you can always check your answer because when you multiply this, you do x times x, x. Um, so now you take your first term of your quotient and you multiply it by both terms of your, div of your divisor. And this is what gets a lot of students is we're only dividing by our first term, but once we get our quotient, we're going to multiply it by both terms of our divisor. So what I have is x times x is x squared, and then x times 5 is positive 5x. Then what we do is we now subtract our whole row. And I'm going to put these in parentheses so that we can see exactly what's going to be happening because basically you're not only subtracting the x squared, but you're subtracting the 5x. So x squared minus x squared is going to give me 0x squared, which is just 0. So whenever you multiply your quotient by your first term, you always want to get the exact same back. And that's how you can determine if you did your dividing right. Then, so I do x times 5, or x times x, and then x times 5. So then, then I subtract 8x minus 5x, and that's going to give me 3x. Then I bring down all the rest of my terms. And now I, up, now I do the division pro process again. x divides into 3, 3x, positive 3 times. Then I take the 3 and multiply it by the x and multiply it by the 5. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times 5 is positive 15. Notice again how the x squared and the x squared are the same. 3x and the 3x are the same. That's on purpose. Then I subtract. And when I subtract, I have 3x minus 3x is 0x. 15, which is 0. 15 minus 15 is 0. So therefore, when you have a 0 as your remainder, then that is going to be your quotient or you'll have no remainder. So therefore, that is your quotient, x plus 3. And basically, again, if you think about a division problem, you know, for instance, let's just kind of go over this. 4 divides into 8. 4 divides 8 two times. 2 times 8 is 8. 0. So basically, 4 divides into 8 two times. Or you can rewrite that as a multiplication problem, saying 2 times 4 equals 8. And basically, what this is saying is x plus 3 times x plus 5 equals x squared plus 8x plus 15. And you can always verify your answer by multiplying them to make sure that you get back your dividend. All right, so let's get on to the next problem. Uh, the next problem is we have now an extra term. So I have an x cubed minus 2x minus 5x plus 6 divided by x minus 3. Again, we're going to want to rewrite this using our long division algorithm. So I'll write x minus 3 divides into ah, x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. 
OK, now again, we start with our first term here, which is going to be x. And we divide the x into x cubed. Now, x divides into x cubed. And again, you can think about this. A lot of students like get confused. x divides into x cubed. Use the rules of exponents. That becomes x squared. Then we multiply that by both terms. x squared times x is x, well, let's use green, is x cubed. x squared times negative 3 is going to be a negative 3x squared. Again, put them in parentheses and subtract. Remember, you're subtracting the whole row. So x cubed minus x cubed is 0x cubed, or just 0. So I'm not going to write it this time. Negative 2x minus a negative. And that's why the parentheses is so important, because a lot of students will just do, oh, negative 2x minus 3x. No, it's negative 2x minus a negative 3x. So minus a negative is a double negative. That basically turns that to basically a positive. Uh, well, I don't want to confuse. So basically, minus a negative is the same thing as adding. So it's really negative 2x plus 3x, which is just going to give us x squared. I'll bring down the rest of my row. Okay. Then I start the whole process again. x divides into x squared. That's going to be a positive x times. Again, multiply the x times both terms in your divisor. x times x is going to leave me with x squared. x times negative 3 gives me a negative 3x. Again, subtract the rows. x squared minus x squared is 0x squared, which is just 0. Negative 5 minus a negative is going to give me a negative 2x. And then I have um, bring down plus 6. So now, again, I go through this. x times negative, or x divides into negative 2x. That's going to be a negative, oops, let's use red. Negative 2 times. Negative 2 times x is going to be a negative 2x. And negative 2 times negative 3 is going to be a positive 6. When I go ahead and subtract, I get 0. So therefore, again, that this divisor evenly divides into the dividend x squared plus x minus 2 times. So there it is. OK, so now we're dealing with the problem um, that now we have our divisor is 3x plus 4. It's OK. It's going to be the exact same uh, type of problem we've done before, um, except now we're just going to, instead of dividing by x, we're now going to be dividing by 3x. Again, make sure that your dividend as well as your divisor are in descending order, which they are. So let's write it as the division algorithm. So therefore, I have 3x plus 4 divides into 6x cubed plus 17x squared plus 27x plus 20. OK. Again, start only. we're only going to be divising by 3x. And then once we get our quotient, we multiply by both. So 3x divides into 6x squared. Well, now, since we have a coefficient and a variable, 3 divides into 6 2 times. x divides into x cubed x squared times. Then again, you multiply by both. I'm not going to show the arrows this time. Um, I should have shown that here. I'm not going to show the arrows this time. I'm just going to kind of talk my way through it. 2x squared times uh, 3x. 2x squared times 3x is going to give us a 6x cubed. 2x squared times 4 is going to give us a positive 4x squared. Oh, that gives us an 8x squared. What am I talking about? OK. Then, again, I subtract my rows. I always like to use parentheses. If you don't use parentheses, this is where a lot of students make their mistakes. That becomes 0. When you subtract here, you get a 9x squared. Bring down the rest of my rows, plus or bring down the rest of my um, problem. Then we draw it again. 3x divides into a 9x cubed. Well, 9 divides into 3, positive 3 times. x divides into x squared, x times. Now I'm going to multiply 3x times 3x and 3x times 4. 3x times 3x is 9x. 9x squared, I'm sorry. And 3x times 4 is going to give me a positive 12x. Again, put it in parentheses and subtract the two rows. 9x squared minus 9x squared is 0x squared. 27x minus 12x is going to give me 15x. Bring down the 20. 3x divides into 15x. 3x divides into 15x a positive 5 times. 5x times 3x is 
15x. 5 times 4 is 20. Again, when I go ahead and subtract my rows, you can see that we have 0 as a remainder. So therefore, my quotient of the division of this problem is 2x squared plus 3x plus 5. OK, um, last example here is now I have one that's written as a, as a, ra as a rational uh, problem. I'm doing one over the other. Well, it's written as a fraction, baby, or a rational expression. That still means the same thing. That basically means 4x squared minus 8x plus 6 divided by 2x minus 1. So now we need to go through and again apply our division property or division algorithm. So I rewrite it as 2x minus 1 divides into 4x squared minus 8x plus 6. So now I'm going to be dividing by 2x. 2x divides into 4x. 2x times. 2x times 2x is 4x. 2x times negative 1 is a negative 2x. Subtract my rows. 4x minus 4, oops, that's squared. 2x times 2x is 4x squared, so these subtract gives you 0. Negative 8x minus a negative 2x, that becomes a double negative, which is positive, is going to give you a negative 6x. 2x divides into the negative 6x, a minus 3 times. Negative 3, oops, I guess I should have brought down the 6, right? Plus 6. 2x divides a negative 3. OK, so negative 3 times 2x is going to be a negative 6x. Negative 3 times negative, negative 3 times negative 1 is going to give me a positive 1. Did I do that? Yeah, OK, yeah, perfect. OK, it's going to give me a positive 1. Now I subtract my ratio, or subtract them, and I get negative 6x minus negative 6x is 0x. But then 6 minus 1 is going to be 5. So now I have a remainder. So my quotient, like the other ones, I had no remainder. So my quotient was just what's in red. Now you can see I have this remainder here is 5. So my quotient is not 2x minus 3 because 2x minus 1 does not evenly divide. When you have a remainder, it doesn't evenly divide. So I have 2x minus 3. I could either write r5, which would be remainder 5, or we can also take our remainder and divide it by our, div our divisor, which would be 2x. Let's put that in red, huh? Or we can write it as our remainder divided by 2x minus 1. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you use long division to divide two polynomials. Thanks.